Welcome to Ritzy Radio on Ruckus Avenue Radio. Today we have a very special guest. We have Guggen. He is a TikTok uh, superstar. He has viral videos, over 8 million total likes. Can you believe that? That's crazy. <laughs> I'm so excited to learn of how you even started this whole journey and how life for you is today. So first off, hi Guggen. Hey. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> good, good, good. Where, first question is, where are you from? Where are you located? I'm from California, Northern California. I've been born and raised in the Bay Area. So this is like where a hometown is, yes. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I am originally from Modesto, California, as you know. Oh, nice. Not the best, though, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I now live in the Bay Area, and I love it. It's amazing. It's, I'll never go back. Sorry, Dad. Sorry, Mom. But I love, love, love. My sister was from Modesto for a bit, and then she kind of moved back to the Bay Area, too, San Jose. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, how long was she there for? A year. I'm surprised she lasts so long. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love Odessa. Um, cool. So how did you first start making videos? Like, how did that come about? Uh, making videos? I used to do, like, scare pranks on my mom when she used to come back from work. I'd hide behind the door, kind of scare her. And I made, like, a compilation of it. I used to put on my IG story. And then my sister, Deepa, she told me, she's like, hey, Guggen, why don't you just put it on TikTok? I was like, what is TikTok? She's like, it's like a combination of Vine and Instagram, but you can put your music and stuff on there. I was like, oh, great. And I put my for first video up, and then the rest is history. <laughs> That's so, so funny. Like, I'm not going to lie. I said this in another show, so, but I'll say it again. At first, I was like, TikTok's so lame. Like, that's for kids. I thought it was going to be like those dumb dance videos, and that's all it was. Exactly. And just like, I think a month and a half ago, I downloaded it. And it's the most addicting app. Sometimes I'll be sitting there, my head is hurting because I've been watching so many videos, but it's so entertaining. It I is. love it so much. You meet, you see a lot of creative people on there, and you're just like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and it's not just those dance. No, it's I, not that bad. It's, like, it's not just those dances. It's just like there's so many creative, like how you said, creative folks on there. It's just, it's, it's truly incredible. Yes. Uh, when did you start making these videos? I know you said that you. I had the idea from your sister, but when was it? What time frame was it when you started making them? You'd probably be surprised, but I started in 2012. Oh, wow. But for like for TikTok only, it was ever since March of this year. Oh, it's a quarantine. People yes. have been watching. <laughs> exactly. So from there, just started making videos, kind of kept it entertaining for the peeps and also the fan following that kind of say they love my mom and then kind of like, kept milking the scaring because that's what I like I'm I'm not like a Halloween scary kind of guy but just continued on with the scare pranks that's awesome and you know what um yeah did, did you see the fast following from TikTok did that that is that how you started getting the following or have you been getting it since, uh, from Instagram from the beginning no Instagram was dry as hell for me sorry uh but I'll say sorry it, TikTok, TikTok is just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's crazy within the and six months. Man. Did you get like cross, like, let's say like, so you start on TikTok, you got, gained the following. Did people start following you on Instagram from TikTok or how did that work out? Yes. Yeah, so uh, since the India banned TikTok, mm -hmm. I had a lot of my Indian followers following me on Instagram because I knew they couldn't watch it on there. So I tried to bring it to them on Instagram and I just been posting on both platforms and then ever since then. And what are your true feelings about reels? What do you think about reels on Instagram? Reels, uh, it's, it's, it's cool because you can still swipe up kind of like uh, TikTok and see the stuff. But the only thing that it is, I have minute videos sometimes. I can't post it because it has like 15 seconds, right. which is not bad, but like, yeah. On, on, same. Yeah, on TikTok, you can see the views and kind of like the like ratio. It's kind of difficult to see the views on reels. But I'm pretty sure it's going to fix all the bugs and then I'll start posting on there. But most of my videos are longer than a minute. <laughs> right. That's, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you on that aspect. Awesome. So when did you know you wanted to be a TikToker and a YouTuber? I know you have a new YouTube channel, but when was it when you were like, this is what I want to do for fun and invest my time in making this content? Uh, see, the thing is with me, I kind of like go with the flow kind of guy because it's like from like last year till now has been kind of crazy. Well, actually, since 2018 till now, it's been a little bit crazy because I've been going with the flow. But 
I was never sure about being a TikToker or a YouTuber. Like I was always built on making music. You know, that's, that was my outlet to the world to see our creativeness. But ever since I've been posting my pranks here and there, I was just continued with it. I kind of liked it because my fans have been hitting me up saying, hey, vlog your life, uh, do your longer pranks. And then they kind of inspired me to make a YouTube for them. And right. then that's what kind of time be a full-time YouTuber and TikToker. That's awesome. That's awesome. So tell me about the first video that went viral that you like woke up and you're like, oh shit, where did this come from? I kid you not. It was the very first video I ever posted. The very first one. Wow. So it was before my sister's birthday and she was telling me, post that on TikTok. It was hella funny because I showed my brother. He was laughing his ass off. I was laughing my ass off and my sister was laughing her ass off. So the day before her birthday, she's like, post it on TikTok. I was like, all right, let me just post it for fun. Right then and there, I went and checked back and I was like, oh, cool, I got 57 views with like no following. And mm -hmm. then from there, we were playing, you know, Super Smash Brothers, we were playing Melee. Um, we came back to it, 100,000 views. Wow. And I was like, what? What did I even post? And then that's from amazing. there. And that's what I love about TikTok. I have like about 8,000 followers on Instagram and it's been so stagnant for like so long because I've been taking like huge breaks in between in terms of social media posting. So it's like, I don't blame my followers. They probably are like, who the, why the hell is she like this? So Instagram, like it's been like a whole journey, but with TikTok, I mean, even when I had like 50 followers, like not even that, I had like a thousand views. And for me, a thousand is a lot on TikTok because it's like, I don't have any followers, like 50, like that's it. So exactly. it's like a platform, like I think their mission statement or something like that is like, this is a platform for new um, creators to get views and leverage. And I feel like Instagram doesn't really post your your content on the, what is it called? The uh, newsfeed. Or page, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or page. I'm like an old person, newsfeed. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, and so it's so interesting. So I, I, as we mentioned that you do music, how did you like learn how to produce music and how did that journey begin? That's all thanks to my brother actually, cause uh, he kind of bought this kind of whole setup. I wish I could like flip my cam, like the Mac around to show you, but he started everything. He's been into music ever since he was a child. He played tabla, self-taught, dole, self-taught. So he got into music production cause you learn from you know, college at classes there. And then I was like, yo, this is, looks fun. Like, I want to know how music's made. So he told me the roots and all like the routes of what to do, how to EQ this, how to use the compressor, how to make melodies. I don't know how to play any kind of intro, but anything that sounds good, we kind of just implement in our tracks. Right. But yeah, I used to bug him at work. Hey, Ish, how do you do this? Ish, how do you do this? And he would tell me. And then we kind of formed our production team. <laughs> Amazing. How long has it been since you guys been making music? It's been eight years. Wow, that's amazing. And I have a saying, like, you have to be uncomfortable until you get comfortable. Some people, when they feel like, you know, some people are blessed to be really good at something right away, but sometimes it takes a, lo a lot of time and a lot of practice, right? And so, like, that's where you have to just keep pushing in and keep doing it, doing it until you become an expert, right? So, yeah, it does take that long to really yeah. get in the flow of things. My brother always says this as well. It's not the destination, it's the journey. I mean, that saying is a lot, but, like, you are crafting your own style. That's what I feel like it's um, mm -hmm. what it comes down to at the end of the day. That's awesome. I love that. So how do you spend your time making the comedy co videos and working on your music? I know it can get a lot. I know I have a problem with this and I wholeheartedly admit it like work and then there's, you know, your social media stuff. And then there's like my radio stuff, like all these little buckets. And sometimes one bucket becomes a priority and then I feel like I don't even want to do the other two. So how do you balance between the both? Yeah, just kind of like what you were saying, you just kind of, when one kind of picks up, you kind of more involved in that one. But uh, luckily my brother and I were a team, so he kind of takes more of the aspect of the music. Right. Um, but like, if I'm like at a creator's block on a prank, I usually just kind of let my mind go with music, kind of play around, get some creativeness there. And if I, it's like vice versa. If I don't got anything for music, then I'm on the uh, pranking stuff, kind of all the vlogging stuff. So it's kind of like, it's like a stress reliever on both of them. Right, so that's right, right. That's awesome. So moving on to social media, I'm going to pick your brain on this because I know a lot of people have problems and struggle on this. So I'd love to learn. So you have, again, over 8 million likes. You have millions of views on your videos on TikTok. 
how did you first start your first, I know you mentioned your first ever TikTok, but how did you first start like the process of it, right? So like, I feel like there's like a process, like some people are like, do you post three videos a week or do you post daily? Like that whole regimen, that whole routine, how do you start that and figure that out? Well, you got to find your niche. Like what is your content based around? I like to make people laugh. Right. Um, even though I'm not funny in real life, <laughs> but during the, through my pranks, people like to see my creativeness and I kind of just excelled on that. Just mm. did things to make people laugh. Some people say post like four or five times a day. I don't have that many videos to post four or five times a day. So I just post them daily. So even daily videos could be hard. So if you just stay within your fan base's eyes, like three times a week should be fine. Four mm. times a week should be fine, but just make sure you're in your uh, fans eyes because then they'll they'll just out of sight out of mind kind of thing um, they'll yeah. just forget about you if you don't constantly post right 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 I even like in on Instagram I even had people unfollow me when I stopped posting for like a long time and it was so sad and I was like no don't go <laughs> so, <laughs> it's that's true you have to keep entertaining you know it's straight, exactly. it's straight up like entertaining you have to keep doing that okay. do you prefer Instagram or do you prefer TikTok you know they're both really really great platforms I can't pick one because it's just kind of like, uh, but you know, TikTok kind of gave me my fame in a way. So right. I'm thankful more to TikTok because Instagram, I kid you not, in March, I was at 330 followers mm -hmm. and no one would like my pictures. I would get like 10, 15 likes. And wait, I'm sorry, which platform was Instagram. it? Instagram. Instagram. Got it. Got it. Yes. 333, right? 330, yeah, followers. Uh -huh. And then kind of, Ever since I kind of just, you know what, hey, I did me, TikTok accepted me, who I am, all that stuff. And then I just started like, you know what, I'm posting on Instagram and then Instagram picked up. But I would like to say I like TikTok just a tad bit better. But they're both very great platforms. That's awesome. Love that. Any tips on starting your YouTube channel? I know that one for sure is like a hard, hard, hard platform just because it's the hub of like pretty much like television online, right? And so like, how do you start your YouTube channel and that whole process? I'm still starting mine, but this is my tip on YouTube videos. It's kind of, kind of just do what you're doing on TikTok mm. and just expand your videos longer because people like to sit there and watch on YouTube. TikTok, not so much. It's like 15 seconds, like I'm done. Instagram, same thing, 15 seconds, I'm done. YouTube, they want to see you. They want to see your life. They want to see your vlogs. They want to see what you're doing, what you're eating for breakfast. So, yeah. <laughs> so just, I would just say, kind of do an introduction video for your uh, Instagram, um, uh, your YouTube. And then from there, just trickle it down and then Love make that. more and more videos. Makes sense. Awesome. So how does one know that they're ready to like do this whole social media thing, right? Because sometimes people want to do it and they're like, oh, I don't know if I'm this is for me, how, what advice could give someone like once they're ready to become an influencer? I hate that word, but. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. What you just never know if you're ready. Cause like, if, if, that's where you start. It's the better to be lost than know where you're going. Cause that's a good place to start. Cause then you just start picking up on stuff. Uh, for me, like I said, I didn't know I wanted to do this. So I just kind of put myself out there and just know for the people who are starting out, just kind of know how to deal with negative comments as well. Mm, mm -hmm. Know that because like people are like this. Oh, I'm gonna be so famous when I post this. No, it doesn't work. You probably get like ten thousand views or maybe even less. That's right. what it is. But you're gonna get a lot of hate. But you grow from that. Oh my God, have you seen the videos of that girl that's singing that song? Oh, the no guidance one. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God, I feel so bad for her. Like, it's so sad, the amount of hate she gets. Like, it's just so it's, it's crazy. Fun. Like, with me, with me personally, I just don't like making fun of people because they're trying, but it's just kind of so hard because she followed up with another video. And I'm Oh, just, I know, I saw that one. It's so cringy. That, that video is so cringy. Everything's just so cringy about it. But I feel like the, the reason why I bring her up is like the negative comments thing. Like, in my head, like, I have never went out of my way to go say something mean to someone like it just would That's never true. cross my mind and I feel like where why do like when I don't like someone I just literally scroll like exactly oh. exactly and <laughs> and also the people who are writing negative comments about her that's her fame 
that is her fame. She Not got right. so many likes off that video. How many videos <laughs> people recreated because of that song? Like, you could hate all you want, but that is catchy. <laughs> I was literally, the whole night, I couldn't stop hearing it in my head and i was like oh my god but it works and it made it it made her famous and like hey it's like that's her way to get in this whole and, world and and i'm pretty sure like two years down the road she's gonna come up with some phenomenal music and people are like dude that's her because the yeah. people gave hate to that friday girl and look at her now do you ever, i don't know if you remember this but do you remember uh oh my god i forgot his name he's from the bay area and aka amazing made so much fun of him i don't remember his name but basically i'll remember it eventually and if i remember his name after this interview i'll let you know but he same story like he he had this song and it was so bad and aka amazing made a whole video about it and made so much fun of him oh no, i thought it came to me but anyway same story and now he's like doing so well he i guess this is ex exclusive but he's gonna have a song with e40 coming out i think next year or something like that and he's a okay. dumpy guy so are and everything oh and, that's what's so up there mm -hmm. you go so mm -hmm. milk it if you can <laughs> oh <out>, yes <laughs> all right so what advice can you give people who uh, want oh actually i already asked you that one actually i didn't really ask you that so what advice can you give people who want to balance their side hustle and work life? So I know like your work life and your side hustles, right? That's different from your hobbies, but how do you balance the both? Cause sometimes you can get really tired when you come home from work and your create your creative uh, mindset isn't there. Right. So, but in, all, in all honesty, I mean, I used to do that, like balance my work life and then come back and do videos. But in all honesty, it's probably going to sound so freaking weird, but I quit my job to pursue this full force because uh, I was tired. I, was, I wasn't a car dealership. I was an internet sales manager. Um, and, you know, COVID was happening. It was just a lot of things going on and not a lot of people were buying cars. Right. So I was just like, you know what? This is kind of what's working for me. I always wanted to be in entertainment. So I was like, let me just stop this. Not worth my time, even though it was well, good, good paying job. Let's, let's see where this goes. And then, but to balance it, just mentally prepare yourself. I don't know. Just kind of like know what you're going to, you know, when you do your eight hour job, nine hour job, come back, rest for an hour or two, and then hop on your grind. Cause. And you know, I want to pause you right there. When you said like, I know this sounds weird. Like that's where we need to like, like, this is a job too. Like, why do we degrade the creative, creative jobs, right? Like the music production, the acting the like all these things where in in reality they are like high paying jobs exactly. because people have that narrative especially in our community they're like oh you do music oh that's not a real job like why 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 do you give side eye to people who who do music right and, it's yeah. so hard so hard i know it it's extremely hard to do creative work so when you say like oh um you know i quit my job for this i think that's amazing if you have the luxury to do that then full force do it and really hone in on those skills and and make that's how you can in reality that's how you can make it yeah. a full-time job right sometimes you have to you know make sacrifices in order for it to become a reality. So I love that you did that. So don't be, don't say that it's a bad thing or a bad decision or anything like that. <laughs> fitting for you and I'm glad that you did it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, so life outside of creating. When you're not working on creating content, what are you up to? What do you do for fun? Well, my family and I, we like to travel to places. Mm -hmm. So I, we like in the beginning of Latin, no, ending of last year of December, we would go back to back to back trips, like uh, once a month. Mm -hmm. But ever since COVID happened, we couldn't really do much. But I usually like to go work out, you know, outside of TikTok. Uh, I like to, I like to eat. So I go try new places every day. Like at least I try to. Um, other than that, yeah. I mean, COVID, not much, just those kind of things. <laughs> things that's awesome. I know with COVID, you have limitations, right? So yeah. I, for me, I just like watching movies and TV and just yes, not Netflix is my go-to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite uh, binge-watching show right now? So I'm into like kind of like the mob thing. I don't know if you guys you can see that, but kind of like I'm into the Godfather. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, 
so I binge watched Fear City. I'm not too sure if you saw that. I kind of watched Last Chance, Last Dance uh, oh, with yeah. Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm, yeah. So anything mob related on there, I kind of like just watched the whole thing, like these movies, Donnie Bro- Brasco. I think that was a movie. Uh-huh. Uh, and have then, you watched, uh, do you have Hulu by any chance? I don't have Hulu. Oh, if you can get your friend's like password or something. I don't have it anymore because I canceled it because I already like maxed everything out. But <laughs> if you ever do you happen to get a Hulu account, you should watch um, the show McMillions, okay? McMillions, like McDonald's, but McMillions. Okay. It's this whole like thing about McDonald's and like strangely enough, the mob is involved and it's real. Like it's like a true story. FBI was involved and it was like about the um, monopoly tickets that happened in uh, 2008. Long time ago, this happened. Basically, I don't want to give it away, but just watch it. And oh, you I like it because it has the mob involved. And it's like the real mob too. So it's really yeah, because in the Fear City, yeah, going a little off topic, but Fear City was about the skyscrapers and the mob owned all the constructions. Oh, so wow. now, yeah, they're all built off of the mob. That's yeah. real, like real life. Yeah, the Trump <laughs> Towers were built off the mob. Mob built the Trump Towers. Oh shit, that's yeah. so wild. I know. Yeah, I thought. Like- this is extremely off topic, but I had a conspiracy theory of like, you know, those kiosks in malls, the yeah. ones that are like, I don't know, jewelry and like all those things. And like, no one, like no one really buys things from there. Like if you really think about it, they're like always empty, especially the cell phone ones. You're like, who the hell even, do you never really see a crowd around those kiosks in the mall? Right. And I had a theory that I was like, the, the, those are probably like uh, how the mob is like laundering money, right? So they're just having these little like kiosks mm. and they're probably laundering money and like cleaning the money out. Cause it's like, who the hell are buying these little keychains, these little things? I mean, they probably get like a some money out of it, but they don't make a whole like living off. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking this, I was thinking the same thing. Like, how are these people open? But dude, whoa, that is actually a nice. Good, good theory, good theory. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So I think I have one last question before we bring your mom in, special guest, <laughs> so double guest today on this segment. So I think um, I already know the answer to this, but I still want to ask, do you, does your family and friends support what you do and have they always? My parents definitely supported my career. You know, like when I told them, my, my, I have three sisters and an older brother and they all went to college. And I didn't finish college and I told my parents and my parents were like, my dad was like, you know, it's not for everyone. If you could just get a job and start working, that should be fine. I was like, all right, sounds good. And my, I told, we told my parents about music a long, long time ago and they loved it. Cause my, my, both my parents were actors, actresses back in their day. Oh, that's like, so you know, cool. during plays and stuff. Yeah. Wow. And if you see one of your, any of our, any of our music videos, like Junia with uh, Junia Town, and our new song color they're in there <laughs> yeah yes yeah. so we like we're very family oriented so we all support one another because if you don't got family what do you got have at the end of the day so cool i love that and the reason why this question is so important is just because there are people out there that their parents don't support their creativity or their creative job their work or anything and it's so funny even like um i have some friends that are, who are nigerian their parents think the same way they're like all right, are you making money off of this? Like, what's going on? And like, I have a friend who's a professional dancer. And at first he wasn't making money when he was teaching. And she, um, his mom was like curious about that. And like, hey, like, this is not a great, you know, career path. And it's so crazy because he's so talented. And I think like, again, to the point where it's like, parents, friends, family members, they need to be supportive on on these type of things that we want to do, right? Exactly. So. Awesome. So, okay, here's the part where we bring your mother in. Are you ready to prank her on Ritzy Wing? I am. Can she I hear am. Us? Can she hear no, us? no, she's in her room. I'll just tell her, oh, can I tell you what I'm going to do? Or Yeah, you, you tell me. You tell I'm going to say, I, I got a tattoo and then kind of like show it. Hello. <laughs> How are you, Auntie? How are you, Vida? Can I see you? Good, good. Hello, welcome to our show. It's so exciting to have you. You are a superstar now. How does it feel to be a famous um, TikToker, famous Instagrammer? <laughs> because of my son. But I, oh. How do you feel about it? Oh, I'm so excited. I feel like floating in the air. 
<laughs> Auntie, you are such a delight. Every time I watch, like, so I found your son through Instagram, TikTok. And every time I watch his videos, like, I love the ones that you're in it. It, it makes me so happy because it's like so genuine and I love, love, love all the things that, um, that you're in. And I also wanted to mention, um, I know this is probably not your favorite ones, but the pranks that he does on you are like so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He surprised me every time. <laughs> every time he surprised me. Auntie, or don't you ever get suspicious? Like, okay, is this real or is this a prank? I feel like you always um, fall for it. <laughs> no, uh, because you know, see, he's my son, so I never expect he was gonna do something like that to me. <laughs> so every time <laughs> we just do it, I just like, oh, oh, oh. You know what I'm saying? Mother never expects. Oh, trust him too much. I trust him. He's my baby. What is your favorite video that you were in? You know, I really liked it. Then um, he took me to the shop where he has a tattoo. Oh, my remember? God. And I said, no, I don't want to do the tattoo. But then he gave me the special treatment. Oh, it made my heart got mad. Oh, oh I, yes, I remember when he took you to the nail the salon. salon. Yeah, salon one. <laughs> you, know, you, you expect from the daughters but the boys you know uh, <laughs> and he surprised me i was just like oh my god i just tear coming i <laughs> love it all right so what about the worst video that he has done worst prank <laughs> one did you hate absolutely hate you know the midnight prank the nun one i woke up <laughs> middle of the night to drink the water and he was hiding i didn't see you know <laughs> and Oh my God, that time I was so mad at him. And I said, you know. <laughs> you know what? Another one that I loved was when I think you were sleeping and he woke you up to like. Um, With the remote. <laughs> I was, did you see how I am so sleepy? I was so tired. That one, I was even mad because I hate when anyone wakes me up. And I was like, oh my God, that is like so sad. Yes, you know. My daughter's hobby, and why she's not talking? <laughs> and I was so tired. I love it. The recent one that you guys just made, I want to know how you guys came up with the concept. So it was the one where it was a Halloween, and you had the whole family. So oh, exactly. how did that concept come about? Tell, tell us about that. So I'm very, like, love Halloween. My mom's birthday is October 2nd. My birthday is October 19th, their anniversary. The October. wedding is October 11th. My sister's are you guys Scorpios? Libras. Libra. Oh, Libras are better than this. My sister's a Scorpio. <laughs> but she's kind of scary. So. <laughs> yeah, Libra. Libra. Yeah, but, but with that one, I, I, cause we usually have a Halloween tree. It's kind of, something a little different, but people always look at my videos like, oh, it's a Christmas tree. You have a Christmas tree. But no, I did a Halloween tree. And oh. I was going to, I was going to be me, my dad, and my mom just throw the pumpkin up and drop it. But my sister and my brother were here. So I was like, you know what? You guys get dressed. You guys dress up as a Halloween, vampires, everything. And then from there, kind of just trans transition is what I like to do mm -hmm. to, to surprise people. Yeah. It was so, so flawless. I think even having your, your sister, you said your sister and your brother? Were yes. Here? Yeah, two right. sisters. Yeah. Right. Having the whole family made it even better, I feel like. So I think that worked out perfectly. It was such a great video. Um, that's so awesome. I love that you guys are all into making the videos with him. I think it makes it even better. Um, so it's so nice to have you, Auntie. Like, you are oh, such a supportive you. mom. And I think um, I was telling him, like, more people in our community, unfortunately, like, the parents, they're not very supportive when it comes to creative jobs or creative work. So, you know, you know like uh, I, 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 for me, and I'm telling the parents listening, and I was, I wouldn't want to tell them, please support your kids mm -hmm. because, you know, our time is gone. You know what I'm saying? And now it's new generation and I'm learning so much from him, mm -hmm. my kids. And on top of that, you know, we are spending so much time together and he's keeping me young. I'm 64, but I never think I'm 64. You don't even look 64. So whatever you do now, after the show, you have to tell me your secrets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, you know? And I'm proud because, you know, see, I'm so blessed. He's my baby, you know, and not, especially these days, not kids spend time with the parents, you know? Right. And I am the luckiest one. You know, so, so much. And I want the parents should understand their kids. It's their life. 
you know, and you support them no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they're not going to come to us, who are they going to go to? Yeah, that's so true. That you is know, very true. and I want the parents to understand. I know we Punjabi people or Indian people are very, very, oh, lo, kya kahenge. Mm -hmm. oh, but this is not right. Time change. That is true. Except the good things, you know. That is Our true. time was we never had a phone. We never had a, you know, um, TV mm -hmm. when we grew up. Mm -hmm. But now they have a cell phone, everything, technology. And we learned so much from them. It's true. And also, I feel like we are now in America, right? Yeah. So our mindset is 50-50. It's like American and we also have our Punjabi culture and everything. And so like, it's, it's the mo the we what we need from our parents is to understand that we have two different perspectives now, right? Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's like, yes, I love my India. You know, don't get me wrong. I bond there. I really, I we go. Yeah. But America is our Karam Bhumi, you know? Yeah. That's our term. You know, we, we are here and yeah. we got so much good things and we are blessed we are here. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know? And why we have to keep our Indian old traditional to this young generation, they don't know. <laughs> but they're born and raised here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. if really you want them to uh, learn the Indian things, then you should take them to the India. <laughs> Stay yeah. there. That is true. I say that all the time. I'm like, hey, why did we come here? <laughs> yeah, why did we come here? Yeah. So accept it. You know, that's good, you know. And, yeah. be, and you should be lucky, you know, they are here, you mm -hmm. know, and we are learning from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. I want them to parents should support their children no matter what. And they are not a good kids. They are so innocent. They don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't know Indian things, but that's I'm true. glad. But they know both. I'm going to put this recording and I'm going to make a WhatsApp video so I can send it to all the Indian <laughs> parents so they can learn from you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. definitely. So, Gagan, question for you. Is there anything that you ever lied to your mom about? Or is there anything that you hid from your mom that you want to share with us? <laughs> all right, since this is going to be on a radio show, um, and you got to see what people could say. <laughs> uh, I got a tattoo. A real one. Tattoo where? It's right here. Just don't be mad. Good, but I'm gonna. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Auntie, you know it's so funny. I love that you always fall for his pranks. <laughs> you look at it. Oh, I sold it with a lot. Oh my god. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, we had people, to. She was so happy. I support my kids, but then, Why you what are you, you doing? Through the pain, you know, it's, it hurts. You know what I'm saying? Too much needle. Oh, I don't like it. I don't. You know, as a mother, you don't want your kids to go through pain, and I don't want my kids to go through pain. Well, we'll get yeah. good one eventually, but we'll talk about them today. Oh, then I'm gonna too many vodka on my things, and then I'm gonna. <laughs> what? Then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I love it. That's so funny. I honestly didn't think you were going to fall for it because he already did it to you before, right? So I was like, I don't know yeah. if you're going to fall for it. <laughs> you know, look, did you see his face? I don't know if you see. He is so blank face. Oh, I did it. It's acting. He has good acting skills. <laughs> oh, he did. He learned it, it from you. <laughs> yes, I learned it from you, Mom. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Auntie, for being on the thank show. You, we you appreciate it. Too. God bless you. Thank you again. Thank we you. Appreciate thank it. We're you. big fans of you. Oh, I love you. God bless you. Love Keep you. doing what you're doing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. So we're going to do a rapid fire round, Auntie, okay? You know what rapid fire round is? Fast, quick, easy questions. They're going to be really fast, okay? okay? So whatever comes to your mind first, you're going to say. Okay? Is that going to be with me too? Yes. Or I'm separate. No, both of you guys together. So I'm going to say the question uh -huh. and then let's have um, Guggen go first and then Auntie will go second. So okay. I'll be question, Guggen, Auntie. Question, Guggen, Auntie. Okay? Perfect. All right. First question. Who's your favorite artist? Music artist. Sulish House Mafia. Auntie. Music artist. 
music artist is Kalyanji Anand ji, old school. <laughs> old school, love that. So what's your favorite type of genre? So Auntie already said hers, but Gagan, what's your favorite type of genre? Electronic dance music. Awesome. EM. <laughs> Yours is old school. Uh, favorite color? Red. Red. Oh, nice. Both have seen. <laughs> <laughs> favorite type of season? Fall. Yes, fall. Oh, I love that. Who is your favorite Hollywood actor and Bollywood actor? Two part question. Hollywood would be Johnny Depp. Uh, Bollywood would be Ritha Roshan. And you? My Rajesh Khanna. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now Hollywood. Hollywood, um, uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, Firework, you know, was he a Caribbean movie? Oh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Yeah, I love I him. I love really him. <laughs> he is really good. Favorite snack? Uh, goldfish would be my favorite snack. Perfect. On to you. Okay, mine? <laughs> Bujia. You know Bujia? With the same yeah, with yes. the Bujia Bujia is, um, Indian gold snack or gold goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> goldfish. <laughs> uh, favorite ice, ice cream flavor? Cookies and cream. Okay. Sherbet. Referred. Sherbet, orange. Yeah. Yeah, that is awesome. Okay, so what's the strangest thing that you're afraid of? Strangest thing I'm afraid of. Spiders? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess. Auntie, you, is there anything <laughs> that you're afraid of that is strange? You know, like a sound, you know, the uh, uh, air horn. You know, something like a very creepy sound. Mm. Make me nervous. <laughs> Especially okay. on his holiday. If you have to pick one, what is your favorite social media platform? TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. You too, Auntie? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm in TikTok. <laughs> now that you're famous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What's one thing, or I really did this one. Okay, so this is a um, question where it's, would you rather speak in every language in the world or would you rather speak to animals? Speak every language in the world. Me? Huh. I'm going to have time with animals. Aww. We chat with them. You know, every sure. morning. Yeah. I love that. All right. We have the last question. Ready? Drum roll. What is your favorite radio show? <gasps> Ruckus Radio. Yay! Uh, radio. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's a trick question. Oh, it was so nice to meet you guys, to hear your story, Guggen, and to have your mom on the show. Um, I learned a lot, and I can't wait for our audience to hear you guys' stories. And yeah, get to meet you guys. So we'll thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. Bye. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Bye.